make sure you have good advice that it's current and that you're doing the right thing. What's up, everybody? Jared Seidenberg, Pine Financial Group, where we work together to help you succeed. Uh, coming to you from the YouTube channel today. Uh, if you found us here on YouTube, uh, drop us a subscribe down there in the corner. Um, if you found us on Facebook, hit us up with a like. Uh, drop us a comment below. Let us know what you think of our channel. Uh, we're trying to build a, a community here for you guys. I uh, want to provide content that you, that you really need. Um, and so uh, today, uh, what I am coming to you with, it really is specific to our uh, Colorado friends. Um, that's my home state, of course, so these things are, are near and dear, and I, and I pay attention to them because they're in my backyard. Here in 2024, uh, we have seven new uh, pieces of legislation, new laws uh, in the state of Colorado that affect our friends that do uh, real estate, um, that largely in the rental community. But here's some things that I'm just going to give you a heads up on. Uh, everybody needs to pay, pay attention. Um, I always do uh, towards the end of every year, towards the beginning of every new year, I look to see what's changed um, around the businesses that I'm involved in. Um, things happen uh, quickly, and uh, sometimes you have to just make sure that you're taking a breath to, to stop and make sure you're still compliant. So that's what I really want to help you with on this side. Um, you know, as, as my role as the general counsel here at Pine, uh, I am super concerned uh, with compliance. Um, I know where that runs into issues uh, with my role as the COO, and sometimes you have to figure out what the right operational piece is uh, in order to comply. Compliance is the is the number one thing. We all need to, to do it. We have to join that uh, with the operational realities of life. And so I'm um, trying to provide some content for you in that way. Um, here are seven things that you need to look out for if you are in real estate in the state of Colorado. Um, number one, landlord-tenant actions. Now you have to put anything that you do in your complaint has to have an affidavit that in indicates whether you have had uh, pre-suit mediation um, and met those requirements. Um, the courts really want you to try to figure this stuff out first uh, before going to court over it. So if you do, you have to certify that you that you have. Um, if you don't, you have to say why um, and you have to meet those requirements. So pay attention to that one. That is House Bill 23-1120. Um, all right, so number two. Uh, I think this one's interesting. Uh, residential court actions um, now have to be available to pro se litigants, um, people without lawyers have to be able to now file electronically in the courts. Um, they also have to be allowed to appear uh, electronically uh, on video uh, uh, from remote access. Um, this levels the playing field a little bit um, and largely born out of stuff that we saw uh, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, the courts realized that uh, virtual appearances were pretty darn efficient. Um, and uh, the, uh, the issue for us as landlords um, is that this means that more of our tenants will show up to these things. Whether you think that's good or bad, I am not here to tell you that, but be prepared. Um, if you're in Colorado and you're going through a, a county court action, mostly going to be a, a forcible entry and detainer, some type of eviction, um, your tenant is likely to, get, to show up electronically, um, and they're going to be able to file everything um, uh, over the computer in the electronic filing system. makes it so much easier for them, uh, less likely to get a default, um, so pay attention to that one, guys. Uh, number three, uh, pets in your lease spaces. Now you can only have a $300 additional security deposit for pets um, or one half percent of the extra month's rent if you're going to do pet rent. $35 is the cap. Pay attention to that one, guys. I know a lot of my friends that have rentals charge real high pet deposits. Um, I get it. I totally understand why they do it. This is going to impact them and their ability to do, do that. All right. Number four, portable tenant screening. Um, you can now not charge a tenant a res uh, an application fee if they give you what's called a portable tenant screening application. Um, this is something that's available to people that are largely low, low income. Um, they can use the same application once. Uh, you can't then hit them with an application fee in order to process everything. Um, also another attempt to uh, minimize the impact on people that are looking for, for rentals, minimize the cost, uh, make it easier for uh, that type of community, uh, the people that need rentals to be able to get them. So that one's out there too. Um, all right, guys, number five, this one's interesting. Um, you cannot, as a landlord, consider tenants' amount of income except for determining if the income equals, I'm going to read this to you, 200% uh, of the annual cost of the rent. Um, that one is important. Um, they are basically saying that if they have more than twice the amount of rent that, that they're going to need to pay, that's all you can consider, guys. Uh, that's as much. So you can't put these high requirements on people. 
try to get a little bit different type of tenant, uh, someone that's got a little bit more cash reserves. Um, you know that they've got the ability to pay the rent. Two times is all you're going to be able to look for, guys. Um, all right. So here's number six. Can I do this correctly? I don't know if I did that correctly. Let's try it both ways. Number six. Um, this one, I, I may do a whole nother video on this one, but really, guys, I, I've said this to you before last year uh, in 2023. Uh, make sure you're looking at those rental agreements. Um, there are a bunch of new pro prohibitions in your rental agreements. Have someone look at them or go find, you know, educate yourself, figure out what you need to do. Make sure that your rental agreements are compliant. If they're not compliant, you're going to have a problem enforcing the agreement itself. And obviously, if you've got a lease, you need to be able to enforce it. So don't mess yourself up by missing this one. Um, a couple of things, uh, the one-way fee shifting doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it used to be in a lot of leases, you could say, well, if the landlord is successful in a challenge or in an eviction, they get their fees, but the tenant didn't get them if they were successful. Now it's got to be both ways. Um, so prevailing party is what this is called. Um, so whoever wins gets their fees paid. So make sure that you know that, guys. Um, you can't waive a jury trial any longer in a lease. Um, if someone wants a jury trial, they're going to get it. Um, now, there is an exception uh, for a hearing that uh, revolves around the possession of the premises. That can be to the bench. It often is to the bench, uh, to the judge, uh, for those that don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, you can no longer waive the jury in every other instance. Um, you can't, through your lease, this will impact people with multifamily units, uh, condo complexes, big apartment complexes, uh, you can no longer in your lease avoid class action litigation by l putting a waiver in there. Now, this is something that used to be permissible. I've seen leases like this. I've drafted leases like this. It basically says to the tenant uh, and the landlord, we are not going to be involved in a class action lawsuit. It, it impacts the ability of tenants in multifamily uh, to organize and to bring a common suit. Uh, the courts will tell you that this is more efficient. Class actions are more efficient. You get one case instead of 40 of them. Um, so you can't waive uh, the class action anywhere. Um, and, and you also cannot give a waiver of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. Um, you just you have to do the right thing in these, th these instances. There are leases out there that, that would waive that, uh, that common law uh, concept. Um, can't do it anymore, guys. So make sure that your leases are compliant. Um, all right, and then the last one, uh, number seven. I, I did it this, this. oh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Number seven, guys. Um, so this one is interesting because uh, when you sell a property uh, in the state of Colorado, you have to disclose whether there's been a radon test um, or you have to allow a radon test. That's something that a lot of people do um, uh, when they're uh, doing the inspection period of the, of the sale. Um, now, in lease transactions, you have to disclose whether the radon test has been done or not. It doesn't say you have to do it. You just have to tell your tenant whether it exists. If it does exist, you probably have to tell them what it says. Um, so these are seven things that have changed in 2024 for our Colorado friends that have rental properties that are in real estate. Uh, make sure you have good advice that it's current and that you're doing the right thing. Uh, let's keep you safe, guys. Thanks for staying with me today. Yes.